Good morning and welcome to House of Power Outreach and Pastor Tori and Pastor Rita and I. We are senior pastors here at the House of Power Outreach and we welcome you to Family Sunday here in May. It's amazing this year is going by so fast, so it's May. And so we are just uh, blessed to be here with you this morning, blessed to be able to come into your house, wherever you are, and, and just uh, enjoy sharing a word with you today. Um, yesterday we were able to uh, uh, be with the Erty family and uh, with their grandfather O'Neill, we sent him his, his home going yesterday, and just this, I uh, mean, I know Pastor Reed and I, and Sobe, and uh, Miracle, and, and Teresa, and just, just, I, we just love being family to people and being able to be there to help with, with, with Miss Margarita and her entire family. I just thank those uh, ladies and, and the people that help so much that, that as a church, you know, more than just a building, it's being there for one another. And so we're thankful to God to be able to do that. Um, as well, you guys, please go to our website and check out our website, pray over our, our ministries. Uh, Pray about being part of the ministries as well, as well as being partnering with us in, 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 your, in your giving and offerings uh, to be able to bless that we may reach many, many more for the kingdom of God. And we just are so thankful. So we're going to pray and then we're going to jump into the word of God this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning. Thank you for everybody that's tuned in uh, to hear and, and, and hear what you have to say that, Lord, that we are prepared with our hearts and our mind and we're open and we're receptive to the will and purpose of God. So, Father, we thank you that you speak to us, Lord God, as you speak through me, that, Father, I decrease and you increase. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to talk about faith in, in, in the direction of God, and we want to point our faith at the promise and not the problem, because you can have faith for the wrong things. You know, there are more people that that are believe, that'll believe in the wrong thing. They have faith. They just know the wrong thing's going to happen. You can hear them even talk about it. They'll talk about, well, something bad is about to happen. Things are going too well. You know, they'll, they'll have faith. For what's wrong, faith for sickness, they have faith for disease, they have faith for all those things, but it, it won't be in the direction of God. And they're, and they're wondering, like, why I get it? Well, you believe you're going to get it. You believe these things are going to happen. You believe the negative, and you believe the things that are in the wrong direction, and, and, you, and you end up receiving it. You're like, why did that happen? Well, that's what you believe. And so we've got to point our faith in the direction of God, which means we need to point our faith in the direction of what the Word of God says. And so in Matthew chapter 8, and verse 23 through 26, uh, it says, And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the disciples were not completed without faith. He says, oh, ye of little faith. And in other words, like, you know, how small was that faith? Because the Bible said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be removed, be cast. And it, it'll, it'll do it. It'll, this tree be thrown at it. You can move mountains with the faith of mustard. How small was this faith? And I think what, what shrinks our faith is fear, even greater even the smallest faith, the smallest of what believe, oh ye of little faith, you got something that you won't even use or you're, you're not using because you just by the sound of your voice, don't you care that we perish? We're like, run, God, get up, get up, we're about to die, we're about to... Just the very fact, the statements that were being said, he, he could realize, you know, little faith has left you with little options to believe. Now you're just called out there and you're stuck out there. Now you're complaining rather than speaking to these things that you have power over. And so we're, it, it showed that, that they had faith on the outside, but they didn't have faith within. The Christian label will not deliver us. Just being a Christian, just say, well, I have faith in God. Well, that don't deliver you. It's, it's, the, it's the, what we do with our faith, especially in times of trouble, that brings deliverance. Deliverance is not going to just show up, knock on your door, and lay down for you. You have to go and, and believe for deliverance and go after deliverance and, and, and not get caught up in the things that are trying to keep you away from, from bringing deliverance. I think that, too, as well as with ourselves, our children, and everything around us, that there has been living. We're living in a time where people are completely been captive, been caught, literally and, and and spiritually and mentally and emotionally speaking, that people are basically being kidnapped and, and being completely held hostage 
against what the will of God has for their lives. And, and we have to be able to get to that place where we speak that deliverance and speak that freedom and go and say, I declare in the name of Jesus that there's faith, there's peace, that this storm will stop in their life. So learned fear is destructive behavior masked as wisdom to keep people from living in God's best. And you, you can learn how to be afraid. You can grow up, you'll be raised in fear. You know, there are families that, that raise their kids in fear and they, they never step out. They do the same thing over and over again and they do what their grandparents did, do what their great grandparents did, do what they were, because they've been raised in this level of fear. And it always reminds me of the story about the, the scientists who did the, the uh, experiment on, on, on the monkeys and they had four of them in the room and they put bananas at the top of this pole and the monkeys tried to climb up there and get it and shoot them with water. And they did this so often, so many times that, that they were afraid to go up and climb and get the, get the banana. So they, they would, and after after a while, they switch them out. They take out one of those monkeys, put in a new one. The new one to come in and say, man, I see bananas. Why y'all sitting around here? And anytime the new one would go in there and try to go up, the other three that had been shot with the water, saw the, saw the water, hit others, pulled that one down. And they did this until they were all swapped out. And there was uh, all of them that had been in there, had never been shot with water, never seen anyone shot with water. But they, every time one of them would try to go up, they pulled the other one down. I think fear works that way. You know, people can show up and then go to church even for their entire lives, but encounter a problem and you, you watch the behavior and you see what's been living in our lives. And, and Jesus was this way. I'm in the boat with you. I said, let us go to the other side. My word is true. My word is sure. Yet the disciples treated Jesus like that storm was bigger than him. Like, like, okay, I'm not going to go out there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go out there in faith because this storm is bigger. This, this problem is bigger. No, Jesus said, oh, you a little faith. What, what, I mean, I thought you believed in me. I thought you believed, I thought you were walking with me. I thought, and it's, and you can tell that's when it's evident. What am I following? Am I following my fears? Am I following my doubts? Am I following the pressures? Am I believing in my Christ, my Savior, who died for me and rose from the grave, who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can even ask or think? And you go back to those parts of that and what you trust in God with. So this is this is that learned fear, that false evidence appearing real and stepping out. I see it in kids every day in school. They, they struggle with this because they learn. And if the parents say, well, we were not good students, so you're not going to be a good student. And that kid just stopped being a good student. Well, your parents might not have been a good student because they didn't have technology that you have today. You may have just what you need right now to be the greatest student ever. But the learned fear will keep us from stepping out. So this can be passed down for generations until someone in the family stands up and have faith over storms instead of hiding from it. You know, you got to stand up. Got to be there. Somebody in the family has to stand up and make a difference. You know, has to be there. I believe, you know, my twin and I, we're, 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 we're saying marriage till we die. We're, we're till death do us part. You know, and, and you know, we, we, we wanted to be uh, married and to the same person for the rest of our lives. You know, we wanted to stop the divorces. Uh, we noticed Jesus showed them great faith by stepping out and speaking to the storm. He didn't hide with them. So Jesus don't go into hiding. Jesus, Jesus didn't join their fear, even though the storm was out there. Jesus, look at the behavior of Christ was not to go back down, not to go and hide, not to go and run. His behavior was, let me show you to step out in front, be right out there in front of the storm and speak peace, be still. And it's, it's a great example of what he's showing us to do today. Faith shouldn't be like the laundry that it shrinks when things get hot. Amen. It should not. It should not be the, should not be like your laundry, should not be like your jeans. That shrink when you wash them in that hot, or when they get washed, they should not shrink. Little faith believes the problem to be bigger than stepping out and trusting God. And just think about it: Are you stepping out and trusting God, or are you tr are you more you have more faith in the direction of whatever what can happen to you instead of the God that's happening in you? You know, First John four four greater is He that's within us than He that's within the world. Man, where's my faith? Am I trusting God? Am I believing God more than I believe this problem? More than I believe the things around me? Uh, wh where's my faith in God? I gotta make sure that that's what's out there. And it's not that. You know, listen, if you're waiting for it to be popular and everyone agree with you, well, that's not gonna happen because they don't believe that in God. You know, the rest of the world is not believing in God. They're not going to speak the things of God. You have to stand out and be obedient. Like Noah. Like Noah. Noah has to stand out and be obedient. And um, John chapter 16 verse 32 through 33 says, Behold, therefore, behold, the hour cometh, yeah, 
is now come that ye shall be scattered every man to his own and shall leave me alone and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye have, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. It is, it is the understanding that Jesus became, overcame the world. And that keeps us from running in fear when things in the world are turned upside down. He says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. In me, you shall have peace. Well, I, I don't believe fear and peace, they can't run together. You can't do something that's an operation, that's a fearful operation and call it in peace. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't have peace unless I'm doing something that, that in fear. I can't operate. They don't, the two don't work together. You can't say that your, your, your destination, your decision, is, is that this, this is my decision that I have peace with, is a decision that does not step out in faith with God. It does not step out uh, on, on the things of God and believe that God is my protector, my healer, my, my provider. We, we, that, that's, that's not peace. And peace is standing out knowing no matter what is out around you, God has got you covered. God has got you protected. It is impossible to be of good cheer if fear is, is the standard we live by. You, you can't have joy and fear at the same time. They don't come together. That is, it's, it's my good cheer, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. And, and then I'm afraid to, to step out. I'm afraid. I'm asking the world, is things going to be okay? No, you ask the word. What does the Bible say? That's my okay. That's my goal. That's my green light is what the Bible says. Not what the world says. Not what, not what people say. Not what people think. It's what does the Bible say? You know, if Jesus come, comes and, 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 and we're, we're not there, we're not available, you're not, we're not able, you know. I, I couldn't even imagine the day not being able to be there for Miss Margarita and her family. I couldn't, couldn't imagine not being able to do that. And, I, and she, vice versa, she'd be there for us. We couldn't imagine not doing that for one another because we know what God has called together to be able to do for one another and be a blessing. So you've got to be in that place. It is, it is impossible to do that. Be of good courage. And walk in the overcoming uh, victory that Jesus has provided. In other words, are we having the faith of Christ? You know, it's, it, it's courage. It's be of good cheer. Be of good courage. It's, you know, am, am I being bold or am I, am I hiding? Am I, am I doing what the world's doing? Uh, what if God calls us out to pray? What if God calls us out to witness? What if God calls out and it's like, well, no, Jesus, you know, Corona's out there. Thought, Wait a minute. Who are you going to obey? The, the, the word or the world? Are the things out there. God will protect you. If he's calling you out, he'll protect you. And I want you to know that if God's calling you out, he's going to cover you up. He's going to make sure that you're covered. In Luke 18, 18, if, if Jesus came today, he said, he, will he find faith in the earth? And I, and I look at it like, if he came right now, will, it, will he find your current status of belief? Faith? Or would he call it fear? You know, would he call it fear? Would he call it faith or fear? Your current situation, Jesus finds you. What Are you walking out? Are you stepping out in faith? Are you believing? Are you strong? Are you bold about God as your protector? God is your healer. God is your covering. God is your refuge. He's your strength. He's your ever-present help in times of trouble. Is that what Jesus finds in us right now? If he were to come, is he finding faith? Or does he find in us in fear? Or is he finding us in doubt? Are we in little faith? In 1 John chapter 4, uh, verse 17 through 19, herein is our love uh, made perfect that we might that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. And it's the love of God, man, you know. Uh, love, of, love covers a multitude of sins. And so we start thinking about the fact of what God is. And, and, and fear and love don't run together, you know. The people say, I, I love you so much, I'm afraid of losing you. No, no, the very fear is pushing someone out because you don't trust. And, and you have to allow the trust of God and the love of God to work together on your behalf. And when you can love, you can let go because you don't have to be afraid of anything leaving you or costing you because you know you got the great love of God in you. 
and in God's love is always greater. So under the punishment of fear, our mind will misunderstand the power of God's love and all that Jesus paid to deliver us. And I, I just know that, that God's love is so powerful. He sent his only begotten son into a fallen world and he didn't send him into a fallen world to hide and he sent him into a fallen world to, to uh, be afraid. He sent him into a fallen world to lift us up, die, resurrect, and so that we could be born again. And so I truly believe that not being perfected in love means that we haven't accepted the full power of God's grace in every situation. The Bible says your grace is sufficient. That means the grace of God provides. Lord, give us the grace to love you more. Give us grace to be understanding the family. Give us grace to step out. No matter what you do, right? No matter where you go, you know, we, we, we hear people say, I don't even know where folks got this from, but it, but it works. It gives traveling grace. You know, I say wherever, traveling grace, traveling grace, wherever I go, there's the love of God. Now, so if I'm walking with Christ, wherever I go is safety. You know, the, the safest place on this earth is the will of God. The most dangerous place on this earth is not the will of God. So you can be in your house, and if you're outside of the will of God, you're in a dangerous spot. You can be locked away, you can be hidden, whatever you want to do. But if you're not in God's will, you're in a dangerous place. You're in danger. So I'd say get back in the will of God, which in the will of God, you could be out and... and things surrounding you and it looks like you're disadvantaged but you're in the safest place you can be because you're in God's will and God will take care of you we see it too many times in the scripture so fear oh I love this fear increases the size of your enemy mentally and reduces your trust in the power of God so it increases the size of your mentally in your mind. Your enemy is so big. Your enemy is this, this massive giant and, and you're already defeated. And what happens is as the enemies go up, the, the trust and belief in God goes down. It reduces your trust in God. And, and now you've got this enemy that's up. Your trust is down. And now you're believing something and even speaking it out of your mouth and calling it the wisdom of God. It is not wisdom. It is that you've lowered the strength of to believe in God and you've raised the fear mentally of your enemy. And no, no you got to gotta get those back on track and get it back to where God bigger, the enemy small, the enemy weak, the enemy is, is not involved. So don't let fear increase that. Fear is, is a powerful tool used by the enemy to rob believers out of victorious living. I believe that with all my heart, soul, mind, and body. That believers are not stepping out because of fear and that they're being robbed each and every day of, of what they could be doing. Uh, I mean, think about the lives that are being left out because believers are not stepping out and, and, and missing out on, on lives that could be changed forever. In Numbers chapter 13, and verse 30 through 33, uh, the, ten, the 12 spies went up and, and, you know, 10 came back with a bad report. And then here's Caleb and, and Joshua come back and they, Caleb quiet the people before Moses and said, we must go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly conquer it. But the men who had gone up with him replied, we cannot go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. So they gave the Israelites a bad report about the land that they had spied out. The land we explored devours its inhabitants and all the people we saw there are great in stature. We even saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak that come from the Neph Nephilim where he, we seem like grasshoppers in our own sight and we must have seen the they, and we must have seen the same to them. They were so afraid of this land. This, now this is the promised land where God is taking them to. He said, I'm taking you into the promised land. And they stopped and, and they come back with this negative report and, and Caleb was like, let's go up now. We can take this now. But they but so are the people and they, they're they freaking out and they're saying all this stuff. But but I didn't want you to hear the thing that they said, we are like grasshoppers in their in our in our own sight. We see ourselves as grasshoppers. So imagine what they see. Let me tell you, if you see yourself afraid, you're going to definitely believe your enemy sees you as even smaller than that. You know, begin to see yourself standing up. Begin to see yourself stepping up. Begin to see yourself covered by the blood of Jesus. Begin to see yourself that I am healed by his stripes, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Begin to see yourself in that mode. Begin to see yourself in that space, in that place, and begin to walk and operate in that vision and that victory for your life. Because as you begin to see that, then you're going to know your enemy sees you as big as well. But if you see yourself small, 
If you see yourself sick, if you see yourself, oh man, I'm going to die, I'm going to catch whatever virus is out there. If you begin to see that, you're going to think the enemy sees that even more and you're going to get something even worse. Listen, God didn't call you to that. God says he's greater in you. As he is, so are we in this world, in this life. We, we are as Christ is. And they came back with this negative report. And I can't help but think that there's many times where God has called us to go out and people come back with a negative report. Well, God, the virus is out there. I can't go out and witness people. The virus is out there. I can't go out and, and serve. I can't go out and be a blessing. I can't go out to church. The virus is out there. Listen, God is out there. <laughs> and you've got God on your side and God is in you. Uh, the two spies with the message of faith and hope was completely ignored in favor of fear and unbelief. And listen, listen, the message of faith and hope is out there. It's, it's, it's there for us. And I think about the early Christians. They have to, you know, when, when uh, they, you know, they were told if you preach, you're going to go to prison. But they didn't stop. They kept going. They kept going for God. And then a real arrest happened. But it didn't stop their faith. We, I don't know, find out where are we in this time where, you know, if we can be shut down that we could be locked out. Well, I, I want to step out and know that my faith is greater than, than the things that are around us. Uh, that, and so the, they, the, they wandered in wilderness for years because they were afraid to face giants. So it was a straight path, but because they, were, they used fear and they, they listened to fear, it caused them to wander for years. How many of us got dreams and goals and visions that right there for the taking, but we're afraid to step out and now we're wandering in, maybe even in poverty, maybe walking in lack because we won't step out and grab the dreams that God has set before us and grab those, those uh, victories that God has set before us in a straight line because we think, what will people think? What if I don't make it? What if this don't happen? And God says, I'm calling you to it. What if you believe me and we walk together and you learn how to stand in faith? I think that's even a better way for us to live. So, so don't wander in the wilderness because of fear. God delivered them from slavery with great miracles, and yet they were willing to imprison themselves with fear. This is the same people that God took out of Egypt, stopped Pharaoh, drowned all the horsemen, showed them great miracles. But one fear caused them to stop. I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing believers even today that, 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 that I've seen pray over people, watch great, see mighty moves of God, and they are completely shut down because they are afraid of what's out here and what's around them. Like, man, I, the church, rise up. Rise up. Point your faith in a direction of God and not the direction of, of fear. Point your faith toward God. And so the, the, uh, the giant problem you have cannot destroy cannot destroy you, but being afraid of the giant can destroy you. You know, the giant can't stop you, but being afraid of it, that'll destroy you. That'll be the destruction. Champions are not crowned for desiring to be champions. Champions are crowned after they defeat an enemy and, and, and winning can't happen if we are hiding in fear. You know, we've got to defeat the enemy. We can't win if we're hiding. We can't win if we're, we're not out there battling. So we have no right to a victory that we are unwilling to fight for. Warfare is necessary for victory, so come out and fight. I welcome you to come out and fight. I'm not, I'm not trying to condemn anybody, but I pray for the conviction of the Lord. Because we need people. There are people out there hurting. There are people out there dying. They don't know Christ. They, they need believers to step out. And if you are believing, you're washed in the blood of Jesus, get out there and trust that. You know, a lot of times we can say we know Christ and we love God and we have faith, but then when it comes time to put that faith to use, to use, there's nowhere to be found. Now, I believe actions speak louder than words. Faith without works is dead. So we're going to step out, and I'm going to trust that God's going to give you the boldness to step out in obedience and be strong in God. And as harsh as this may sound, it's needed. There's a loss in dying. There are kids that are coming out of being locked up and 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 uh in the homes and there's so much abuse that has gone on during this pandemic and lockdown. Hey, let's be ready to receive them and bring healing. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for our faith being pointed in the right direction. Lord God, pointed toward you, pointed toward your word. No matter what it may be, Lord God, their job situations for people that, Lord, they don't know where to do. Let them point their faith and, and help them to point their faith toward you to step out and, and show and see your guiding, see your see you ordering their steps. And I just thank you, Lord Jesus, and breaking any form of fear and doubt, Lord God, that, that Father, we're covered by the blood of Jesus. And, and like Paul, when the snake bit him, Lord God, it could not put venom in him. And said, you never said that we wouldn't go through some bites and we wouldn't go through, we have some hurts, but you did say it wouldn't kill us. 
And Lord, I just thank you for uh, people getting a hold and a revelation being released from fear and, and, and doubt. And Lord God, I thank you for strength of boldness, Lord, that you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. And Lord, we rise up and we step out and we go in faith. And Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing in the body of Christ. As we step out, the rest of the world can see the hand of God being moving forward. And, and it's gonna, they're going to want to know, where did you get your boldness from? And we'll be able to tell them about Jesus. Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us, uh, and we'll see you next time.